Welcome, Welcome to, to Adult Adulthood Loading, Loading, a wellness podcast for young adults still, still trying to figure, figure it out. The content of this podcast is for entertainment and informational purposes only, and is not intended to be a substitute for professional, psychological, psychiatric, or medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified mental health providers for any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or mental disorder. So hi everyone, I'm Emma. Hi Marissa. And we're here to talk about the holiday blues. So we've reached out to others to get some feedback on what their attitudes are about the holidays. And we thought it would be nice to share and get some perspective on what it's like for young adults navigating the holiday season this year. So when you hear this sound, the clip from an anonymous person is coming up. Usually the holidays are It's this happy time full of warmth and excitement and, you know, um, we're going to be spending time with families and everyone is excited for like the Hallmark movies. Like Christmas is just, it's just this big ball of excitement and happiness and fun. Accurate, accurate. I feel like for some people, they're even like waiting, like as soon as October 31st is done, as soon as you can like tuck away all your Halloween stuff, everybody's like... bring out the Mariah Carey music because it's Christmas (laughs) and it's about to be amazing. Usually, just after Halloween, I am into the Christmas spirit big time. But this year, because of the uncertainty surrounding family gatherings, usually on Christmas Day for me, breakfast I'm at at one house, lunch I'm at another house, dinner I'm at another house, because my family is so uh, large. But this year, there will be none of that. Yeah, it's, it's a little sad. And it took me a while to get into it. I'm just realizing that this year, it's just taking more effort than usual. Then the next thought is finances. I think a lot of people could relate to that and haven't taken a hit financially. But now I have to invest in COVID testing in order to go back to um, my immediate family who would usually come to me. And then I need another test to come back here. (sighs) So that means everybody gets candles for Christmas. For others, you know, it can bring some discomfort. It can bring the sadness, anxiety, anger, stress, and even confusing. You know, no one expected the pandemic to last this long. It's been 84 years. Listen. And, you know, Christmas is the holiday. Like, no one really anticipated having to give up. And I think even even without the pandemic, it can still bring these feelings that I mentioned. For some people, you know, it's not always a very pleasant experience for everyone yeah that's that's so true the reality is sometimes it could be a mix of both it could be happy times but also like because it's a time where you're expected to spend time with family it could be very triggering for some persons and the pandemic it just adds a whole other layer of complexity on the holiday times you know because some people are unable to spend time with their family whether it be because they're abroad Or it might be a situation where they have loved ones who might be vulnerable, more vulnerable to getting the virus. And so they they, they can't come and spend time with them. They have to like stay away. I usually spend Christmas with my extremely enormous family from many different countries coming together just for the holidays. We usually start things off with Christmas mass, you know, just giving thanks for everything that we have. And then we have a completely loud, fun, chaotic experience with lots of food, singing, you know, it's very joyous. This year, I know, however, will definitely be different. It's just going to be my immediate family, but it's what needs to be done. We won't gather this year so that we can gather next year. I feel like this experience gives us a chance to reprioritize and just focus on what's important, you know? I'm just really grateful to be safe, healthy, and alive, and that's what I'll want for my family as well. Yeah, and then also, unfortunately, especially as a consequence of the pandemic, a lot of people have lost their lives. So a lot of people might not even be able to spend time with people that they're used to spending time with, or even if they they hadn't spent time with them, they might have realized like, oh, wow, 
maybe this is something that I would have wanted to do that I no longer have the opportunity of doing, at least in the way that I would have liked to have done it. Yeah, because it's just resulted in a lot of people just having to like switch up like so many plans. And it's kind of like we all were thinking, okay, this should be this should be wrapped up by spring. Maybe it'll be finished Mm -hmm. by summer. And now it's like coming around to the end of the year again. Oh, okay. So Christmas is just gonna be affected as well. I think it was like, okay, October, like this is cute and all. November, like, okay, um, let's wrap it up. And now it's just like I got you can't do it. I can't. You are stressing me the hell. I stress you. I can't. You're not I'm not done. done. Yeah, and I think it's been just particularly hard for those who have just been away from their family members for so long. Yeah. This whole thing. And not even just family members. Maybe their significant other or even their friends. It's just been really hard. And because Christmas is advertised at this time of coming together, I feel like it's hitting home that much harder for so many people. Um, I've been in Canada five years now. Yeah, I mean, it is be rough. I mean, I have Bahamian friends and they essentially be going through the same thing and then just can't make it home for whatever reason. And like, we tend to have like an immigrant Christmas. You know, we just come together and comfort each other and cook for each other. And, you know, it has helped a lot. Yeah, so a lot of people, maybe they have to be by themselves for the Christmas break. You know, it's not even just Christmas. Like before that, that can be lonely. But I think it can be even more intensified during this Christmas time when it's like, oh, yeah, they're supposed, like you get these messages, like there's supposed to be a lot of warmth. You're supposed to be having a lot of fun. You're supposed to be getting all these gifts you're supposed to be having a big christmas dinner and so if you're not doing that i think it can be easy for you to feel like easy for us to feel like oh gosh this kind of sucks what type of christmas is this i can't do anything about this oh my gosh maybe if i just like close my eyes it's gonna be like january 3rd and then i don't have to worry about this pressure of it being christmas and then, you know, the big thing, too, is, like, the food prepared on Christmas Day. So it's, like, Honey. you know, all the aunties, yes. the moms, you know, they usually be throwing it down in the kitchen. You made it! You made it! You made it! You made it! And, and now, if you have to spend on your own, it's kind of just, like, well, what am I going to make? Yeah, I really like us from the Caribbean, especially us from ba- the Bahamas. You know, you're ready for the baked macaroni. Yeah. You gotta have that extra cheese on the top with the crisp. Mm. Yeah. Everything is super hot. Sometimes you have, you have the fish, the chicken, the other type of meats. It's so good. Very good. Ah, very good. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just been a lot of long distance friendships and relationships that occurs with the pandemic and then it's the whole like navigating that during the holidays that's been really challenging for some people i would say the main way covid has impacted me and my christmas is that it's prevented me from being able to leave the country and see my girlfriend and it's disappointing because i haven't seen her in a while but in addition to that covid actually ruined the trip we had together previously but at least we're still able to connect using, you know, social media and Skype and stuff like that. So it's not just family relationships or friendships. For a lot of people, it's um, it's romantic relationships. So for some people, they might not even have been in a long distance relationship. But because of the pandemic now or maybe other factors, they have been forced into that in a way. And um, they decided, OK, let's continue this as a long distance relationship. And now, especially during the holidays, or maybe you would have expected to be able to see this romantic partner, you're not able to do that. You're not able to hold their hand. You're not able to give them a kiss and, you know, et cetera. So (laughs) that can be very difficult. And you know those Christmas movies be showing all the love. They, They be having you in your feelings, you know? So mm-hmm. in the holidays, it's just with this pandemic, it, it does feel a little bit harder than usual, you know? And then on top of that, yeah, on top of not being able to see your family or, you know, <laughs> like with your boo, it's, it's the money. 
Mm -hmm. Money that has to be spent you know, on these Christmas gifts, my yeah. God. because the pandemic has just put such a strain on how much time people are able to spend with each other. I think people feel more obligated to like buy these gifts and to just ensure that, that, you know, their loved ones still feel cared for and they have like these tokens. Yes. So it could be a little bit heavy on the pockets. Period. Yeah. I definitely think there's that pressure. Like I can't be there physically right now. I can't be there as much as I'd like to or as close to you as I'd like to be right now. So let me show you how much I care for you with gifts. And we know like some people that's their love language. It's not just, oh, the most expensive gift. It's the, you know, the thought in it. <laughs> it requires so much energy and effort and it can be so stressful. Like I want to get this gift. Then you also don't realize the shipping. In the Bahamas, when you buy something online, you pay for the tax online, like for purchasing the item. Then the item is shipped into the country and you pay a customs tax on it. Then you pay a valued added tax on the customs tax. So you get a whole bunch of taxes. And by the time you finish paying for the item, it's almost double the price of the item. <laughs> like, where's the money? And like people be just be like, sometimes they just go in super hard. I mean, sometimes you don't have a choice. Like... You would think everybody has a Christmas break off, especially when you're younger. It doesn't happen like that. There's some people who are working on Christmas Day. There's some people who are like the whole holiday season, they're just working, working, working. And especially in like the medical field, working for 18 hour shifts, 24 hour shifts, 48 hour shifts, especially if you're like a fireman, 48 hour shift. Working so hard can have an effect on your physical health too even when you're trying to help others. Well, healthcare workers, they've been in overdrive, which is a sucky part, you know? And then it's also those people True. who, True. like, maybe their jobs have just been strained given the pandemic. And now, you know, like, Christmas is one of the, like, mm -hmm. shopping seasons. This is, like, probably for a lot of people, one of the seasons <sighs> for them to actually make money. <laughs> and so this is when you see, like, people are spending long hours. So, like, shipping companies, people are also working overtime, too, which means when are they finding time to buy gifts for themselves? And when are they actually going to find time to spend time with their family members? Uh, I have a very busy schedule where I'm working a number of days. Or I'll be doing, like, schoolwork, studying. And with the little days that I do have free, I, I'm just trying to catch the beach because uh, the beach has been closed for the entire year, basically. And that's how I'm going to spend the holidays, social distancing, places are going to be closed, and just trying to enjoy it as best as I can. I think it's safe to say that Christmas this year is just going to be a very new experience, very different from what we're used to, with just a whole lot of adjustments. Yeah. But don't worry because Emma and I got some tips for y'all. Yes. I think we hear it all the time, but take it one day at a time. Take it one day at a time. Breathe and find creative ways to connect with your faith or your support system. So your friends, your family, your faith leaders. And I think this helps to ground you a bit and help to relax you a bit, especially when you're in a period where there can be such stress, such pressure. And um, yeah, we just got to get creative with it. I think another thing too is, you know, yes, we have our old Christmas traditions. This is what we usually do. But sometimes you just have to adjust, especially with this pandemic. You know, everyone uses this term called the new normal. When it comes to Christmas traditions, maybe it will be helpful to think of new ways or new traditions that you could carry out. Whether, you know, you used to have a big family dinner, maybe you guys could eat dinner on Zoom or play games on Zoom. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be same old, same old. Literally so true. Like, I'm going to drop one real quick. So on YouTube, you know, like this song association game that they have like celebrities come on and play. Someone like put like a bunch of like song association links on it. And it's literally so fun when you play with people and you're like, well, you got to think of a song really, really quickly before the time runs out. It's so fun. So you could just send each other the link and start it at the same time and maybe wear headphones so you can't hear the echo of somebody else's call, but it's so fun. So something like that, you know, there's a bunch of apps like House Party. Yeah. You know, that wasn't yes. sponsored. <laughs> but I mean, if, if you want to sponsor us, I'm not going to stop you. 
Yes, I did that. And you would do it too for a check. But yeah, be creative. Another really good one is meditation. So you might need to do this daily. Like <laughs> we love our family members. I mean, but um, I still might need that meditation daily. You know, sometimes the baby's crying nonstop. There's so much going on. There's so much pressure in the heat of the moment. People getting frustrated too. So I'm like, oh, maybe I need to do this meditation now. Or maybe I need to like, oh, let me start my day right. Let me do my just readings. If you need to do like a reading in the morning, it could be like a faith-based reading if that's something that you're interested in. And just do your little, even like a two-minute meditation. Like I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be super long. Yeah, because, you know, the thing about the holiday season, it falls at the end of the year. And that's when you have a lot of just big due dates for school, for work. You know, it's a hectic season. And also you have to like just so balance the time, like spend with family and getting everyone ready and just getting things in place. Because, you know, things going to lock off on the 25th and the business hours is going to be kind of shaky in between leading up to New Year. So you kind of just feel like this pressure to get so much things done before Um, You get closer to Christmas. And so I think just taking that time to meditate and give yourself that quiet space is going to be super important to make sure you don't become overwhelmed and just overly stressed. Kind of goes back to the whole just take it one day at a time thing. Mm -hmm. I think try not to feel all the pressure of Christmas. Like you, you can feel this pressure like, oh, I'm not feeling as excited as I should be. I'm not I'm not so happy like the movies are telling me I should be. We've been preaching this since we started. Do things how you would do it. Do things how it feels best for you to do it. You know, we're getting more in tune with our ourselves being just who we are without the pressure. Yeah, and I think don't be afraid to do things differently even if it's not the way that other people say it should be done or you feel like it's been done in the past, don't be afraid to just switch things up a bit. And if it is that you are feeling like you aren't as excited as you usually are, or you might be feeling more excited than usual, Mm -hmm. honestly, just embrace the feeling. Just try to process it. Don't feel ashamed about how you're feeling, you know, just kind of go with the flow. So if you want to sit down and drink some cocoa and binge watch the holiday movies on Netflix, and there's a lot, y'all, there's a lot of good ones on there, (laughs) then you do you. You do you, because that's just what Christmas is about. Don't be afraid to indulge in things that make yourself happy or that comforts you at this time. Yeah. If you don't want to have no big Christmas dinner, or maybe if you can't, don't let nobody say, like, I wouldn't do my Christmas like that. I wouldn't do my mashed potato like that. Okay, thank you for your input, but this has been your Christmas alone. So, okay, I'm going to enjoy this craft macaroni. I might even throw some sausages in there, some broccoli, who knows, some onions. Okay. I'll remix this and do it how I want it. Make it fancy. Exactly. Put well, a yeah. little razzle-dazzle on it. <laughs> but that's so true. That's so true. You just got to make things work for you as you... Feel the emotions, just take your time and process it. Be aware of how you're feeling. Try to name it if it's possible. And then Mm -hmm. just let it go. No need to dwell on it. No need to fight it. Just let it go. Yeah, definitely don't fight it, guys. Don't try not to do that. Like, it's here. Identify it. Like, Oh, what is this emotion? And if you can't identify it yet, you can even go through the process of saying like, well, is this a comfortable emotion or is this an uncomfortable emotion? Because I know sometimes it can be tricky to identify emotions, especially if we haven't done that for so long. That and then and then take your time. Also, don't pressure yourself to just like, I need to get over this right now. Mm -hmm. Take your time. And like Marissa said, do your best to let it go. So we hope that these tips are going to be helpful. Don't forget to let us know in the comments. Yep, let us know, guys. And happy holidays. Bye. So we're at the end of today's episode. And we want to say thanks so much for listening. We see you and we appreciate you. You can keep up with us on Instagram at Adulted Loading Podcast for the latest updates. See you next time. Later.